We talked yesterday a bit about uh, uh, Linux distributions, which are not so really favorite in terms of uh, freedom. Did anybody look up which uh, distribution Richard Stormont meant? No, not yet. Okay, I'll give you a hint. It starts with U, but it's not the universal server. Okay, now maybe you can, can look it up. <laughs> okay, uh, we talked yesterday about package building uh, in an automated way uh, using uh, the open build service. And now what can you do with these packages? You can use them, for example, to create a live CD from it. Um, in this case, a live CD for Triton with a little enhancement, so with the GNU Health package, we can build a GNU Health Live CD based on Triton, having the demo database on it, and uh, this is also an option for less technically advanced users uh, to take a, a preview on Triton and on GNU Health. So let me give you a, a, a brief introduction. Um, then we want to try to go through studio uh, live. Um, I will not promise that that works. I have my bad day today. So nearly my computer crashed. I got stuck in the elevator. This thing fall down and moves only left and right in between. Uh, so, well, yeah, at least something is working. <laughs> so we talked about uh, ways yesterday to bring the software to the user. So one possibility is you take the source code you uh, run it through the build service and you get a package out of it. And you can now go and deliver the package uh, through the, to the user. This is usually done um, via repositories, so you can include on most distributions uh, various repositories for special software like for Python or for Triton or for uh, graphics software or whatever and then you can use your package manager to install it. Another option could be that you take these packages, put them into a studio, for example, and uh, then deliver the result to the user. To understand the whole universe, let's say, uh, that uh, Zuse provides, I think we need to take a look at this picture. In the center, put the open build service because this is one of the main tools um, that the professional part of the user as well as the open source uh, project uses. So both distributions are built on the build service. Interacting with it is a uh, tool called OpenQA. So this is an automated testing tool, but not only for packages, it packs or it tests fully distributions. So that means as soon as a new package, for example, is delivered in a so-called factory tree, it gets sooner or later tested with OpenQA, and when the snapshot, when the tests are successful, then it is released for the rolling release distribution, which is called uh, Tumbleweed. So Tumbleweed is basically the tested version of the factory stuff. This, of course, interacts with the open build service as well. So as we've seen from open build, we have an interaction with uh, the distribution, we have with OpenQA, and we can include this into SUSE's Studio. And Studio is a tool that allows you to easily build live CDs from it. And what else do we have in here? Uh, we have a tool or a project called Machinery. This is relatively new and it's really targeting the system administrator. So it now allows you to take snapshots of your system, um, to make backups from it, to export the current settings into a so-called uh, Kiwi format. Um, and this Kiwi format allows you to import it, for example, into Studio as well. Kiwi allows you to export and import the settings. And with that, you can make clones of an existing application or an existing system, for example. So, and this uh, whole set um, gives us the, the opportunity to have a, uh, let's say, closed environment uh, from source to a ready-to-run distribution or a live city. 
So, um, I took a snapshot about the uh, live CD downloads of GNU Health. So, this is uh, about two months old approximately. Uh, I've retired the uh, older uh, versions in between, and uh, two months ago we had about two and a half thousand downloads of the various flavors of uh, the GNU Health live CD. And I think this is a good example that this is, I mean, that this is accepted. You can probably not compare it with a download of a, a Ubuntu live CD or something like that, because, I mean, it's targeting a very special audience, uh, medical doctors or uh, hospital facilities which want to try it. And I think the two and a half thousands uh, is quite a reasonable number. So now let's go to studio. Um, studio has about... Uh, roughly speaking, half a million users. They are uh, not active builders, but if, if you want to make use of it, you have to log in. And we're doing about a uh, thousand builds per day. So if you want to log in, um, you have the option to do that with various uh, tools. For example, if you have already a Zusa account, uh, this is hidden on the novel, you can log in with Google, Twitter, Facebook, Open ID, Yahoo, so whatever you like. Um, first thing that you see is the navigation overview screen. So um, here you have the various uh, distributions that you currently, or the, the various appliances that you currently are using. You can create a new appliance using this button. And you can also immediately manage uh, Amazon images uh, or Azure, Im Azure images. You can upload them from there already into the cloud application to, to run them later. So there is also a thing called the gallery. Um, the gallery are these appliances that are published by other users. So there is a couple of stuff in there. Um, unfortunately, I have to say it's not very well maintained, so you find also some stuff that is already outdated, so you really need to take care. But here you can at least uh, take a first look at stuff that is already there and uh, start, for example, cloning from there. So, um, I would now like to go into the live demo mode. Um, yeah, as I said, if we uh, if if you log in, you see uh, your created appliances. I have a couple published ones here. I have private appliances, so I just started, for example, um, to test the template of the new newly re newly released uh, OpenSUSE Leap. So, what's that like? So, if you enter this. Uh, it tells you welcome to studio, you can give the name, baby a name and that's what you can do on the next, uh, on the first slide. So let's go to the software tab. And here we have various software sources. This is now basically where the repositories from the build service come into the game. Because here we can add a private or a public uh, repository on the build service. So, for example, uh, we could add here uh, the repository for Triton 3.8, for example. Here we have the software that is currently being selected. And uh, we can add uh, various other patterns, for example, let's see for K-Write. It starts immediately uh, searching for it. There is a package found that's called KWrite. Um, it is needed by another application here, so the resolution of the dependencies takes automatically place. But I can also edit um, additionally here. And you see here there is a activity here that's a modifying software. No more battery cells. No more. Bad hair day, as I said. Yeah. 
No problem, I can continue without, just have to I have speak a, a little bit louder. <laughs> I'm not sure whether this is really the better way. Okay. Which one? No, no. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot. <laughs> so, um, well, it's even louder than before, is it? <laughs> <laughs> you have to be loaded. Now. Uh, make sure you're not uh, getting awake again. So, um, as I said, I added the package um, K Write, and here it was telling me immediately okay, I've done this update, and this requires for a couple. Um, uh, a couple of other packages to be added as well. So now let's go to the next tab. That is the configuration tab. So we start with the general configuration and here we can set the default local. So which language, uh, which keyboard settings. We can set the default time zone. Um, and mostly for testing purposes I put this to German. It makes it much easier for me. Uh, we can define the network settings here, so if we're intending to run this later on from a USB stick or something like that, it makes sense to use the network manager. If we're using something like the uh, Linux Enterprise distribution, which is a text-only server, in this case it makes more sense to uh, set this to automatic uh, DHCP settings. We can enable the firewall. We can open the SSH port, that means we can uh, later on administer the system from the outside as well. And we can already set up users and groups in here. So adding a new user is uh, fairly simple as well. You click to add new user. So uh, we'll take the user Luis. Uh, Luis, what, what password do you want? Uh, Axel. Axel, okay. We get the password Axel. Um, so that's it basically. Then the system creates another user following on later on. So we can personalize this baby, we can upload an appliance logo, we can upload a background. Um, we can tell the system what to do on startup. For example, okay, I want to have a rapid login. I can as well configure a server. That means I can immediately set up, for example, a Postgres database or a Maria database, so the follow-up of the, or the free version of the MySQL database. I can tell uh, the system what to do uh, when we log in. Um, it should automatically log in the user Louis, for example. Right. So, this is a tab, especially once the appliance is built here, we can configure some things like how much space it should use, how much memory should be available, and so on. And here now comes a very interesting part. We can run scripts. We can run a script at the end of a build. We can run a script once the appliance boot. And uh, we can add a so-called auto-yost profile when the appliance first boots. So this auto-yost is uh, maintenance feature of uh, the user administration tool, it's called Yast, just another setup tool, um, which we can bring into this as well. So this gives us the option, for example, uh, to uh, whatever configuration that's required that we need to do at the end of the boot or at the startup. So now we are basically through. Then we got one interesting thing. That means overlay files. And in the overlay file section, we can add files, for example, 
the configuration file for the Triton server. Because this is of course not in the standard package, but we probably have a customized version of the configuration file and we can add it here. Once we're done with that, we can go to the build thing and say, okay, now build the appliance and in which format shall you do that? So mostly, um, if you start testing, uh, you use the USB format, uh, but if it's a thing where you say, okay, I will run it as a virtual machine as well, you can by default uh, run a virtual machine as VMware or VirtualBox uh, image, for example. So when you hit the build button, it starts building. And when you're done, you get an image like this here. And now you have various options. And one very really interesting option to my understanding is a test drive. Fingers crossed that it works because it needs a, let's say, reasonably thick uh, internet connection. And this is not really the case in your hotel. So please stop uh, downloading your music and new movies for a moment. <laughs> that we get all the uh, um, network power that we need um, here for the, for the test drive. Okay, that looks good. Uh, we have a connection. Um, it starts booting. Um, this will probably now uh, take a moment. But I can already tell you what's coming up in the end of the day. So we have a section over here that calls modifies files. So if I'm doing anything on the system, uh, for example, setting user settings for the file viewer or for the file manager or something like that, I can go to the modified files tab and then select the files that have been added, for example, or changed, put it automatically in a zip file and then it's sent to the overlay section, the file section that I've shown you before. That means this is an easy way to interact uh, with the build system, right? So if I've changed anything in here, I can add it via the modified file section immediately into uh, the build configuration and on the next build it's being uh, picked up and uh, yeah, hopefully will. Really. So, doesn't look that bad, it's booting at least. So this is by the way using already uh, the new Plasma 5.0, oh, what is it, 3.4 desktop. So let's give it Let's give it another minute. <clears throat> so, while it works, we have also another option for the networking here in this context. For example, uh, we can do an SSH login into the test drive, and we can also use another uh, VNC client. That means just take this command line, fire it into a terminal, it uh, starts up a VNC viewer. Um, at the password and then you are not using the flash front end uh, like we are using at the moment but you are using uh, another uh, remote client. So if I here go here to modify files and hit the refresh changes once again or I hit it then you can see here uh, during the boot process there were already a couple of files changed and if I can pick the right ones here by add and go to the bottom of the screen where I can say here bundle all selected files as archive with the name louis.test and uh, put it into the build section. Just let me collect some some rubbish for the moment and say, okay, we call it Lewis, we bundle it and we add the overlay files to the appliance. Done. 
So let's go to test drive again. Okay, that looks good. So it came up. We have here the system already up and running. Internet, what does it have? It has a conqueror, for example. I added this as a file browser or as an internet browser beforehand. Uh, this test drive, by the way, does not have a network connection to the outside world. It's just uh, inside a sandbox, so for security reasons it's not being connected. Okay, here we have the Conqueror. Do you have a question at the moment to the test driving? If not, I will just close it. Um, go back to my appliance here and check the, the, the file section. And you see the system has automatically added this Louis.tar.bzip2 to the appliance. So in, in this way you can interactively start um, configuring your live system in a way that in the end of the day when you're done with the whole appliance uh, that the user finds the environment that you desire to present him. What do you think, Nico? Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> Didn't want to wake you up, mate. <laughs> um, no, no, I'm not thinking. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you can also here yeah, rename, um, put it on a different location. Hello. So this is um, basically the next uh, things that I intend to do. So I will update uh, the live CD basing to the latest steps. If you want to start, maybe um, you just look at the gallery. You see a, a screen like this and you can say here clone application and then it clones the application that you have on gallery into your own area and you can start building from this. Okay. Thank you very much for your... <laughs> Questions? Can you install after that the live CD? On if I have an installer to it as well, yes. And uh, in, in most of the appliances, let me show you um, the screen here. So in the configuration tab, um, under appliance, you can say here add a live installer to CD and DVDs and then you can install it from there onto a hard disk. Mm -hmm. So maybe use this as a test case for the Triton ERP completely. Oh, you could hear. I mean, now Blue Health is, of course, a special example, but you could uh, make a ready to run uh, CD from there as well. The interesting part was, for example, you just released a new version of the Triton server 3.4.7, I think it was. Right? Uh, the latest 3.8. Was, was not so long ago, if I remember it right. Um, so here, for example, I have uh, the 2.8. Yeah, it's, it's based on 3.4, that's why. Yeah, so let's see a search for Triton D. On D. <coughs> yeah, so here we have already the 3.4 version, of 3.4.7 of the Triton server. If it's not there, um, I can go into the standard and say, okay, synchronize this now. Then it fetches the latest build version from the, the build service. And then I just hit build and I have the latest version in there. Any other questions? And can you save the data to the database? on something else, so just having the live CD and that's a USB key and you store the, the modified data in the memory. You mean the, the build configuration no, of this? No, uh, I mean the Postgres database for example. Uh, taking just the progress, uh, uh, just the Postgres database. Yeah, to, to get the data 
to survive. To be Could yeah, you like demo you? data or something? Like that? No, and it depends on if you're uh, um, building or using a USB image, for example, it uses the first boot to set up the USB stick a little bit. And after that point in time, you have the database persistent. That means uh, if you uh, reboot it, you still got the old status. If you have a CD image, for example, that of course does not work. But you could change the uh, PostgreSQL configuration file to store the... Somewhere on the internet, yeah, potentially. Or on the key. Yeah, that probably should work. Any other questions? Yeah, About please. the stability of the system, any comment? The scalability? Stability. Stability. Um, if I would set up a server, I would do it from a from a normal CD or from a normal uh, distribution. I would probably not use uh, the live CD. It runs reasonably stable, but of course uh, it doesn't have that amount of drivers. For example, especially if you have uh, or if you want to have uh, the uh, the legacy Radiant driver or the uh, AMD graphics drivers. Probably not all firmware that you find on a normal 4.7 gigabyte DVD available. So this makes it a little bit uh, difficult. Also, um, we must say UEFI boot is still a pain in the neck. Um, and uh, between the two of us, I was never really happy with the template of SUSE 13.2. 13.1 was running reasonably well, uh, and now I have to investigate a little bit how it works. But the uh, first look is quite promising, I must say. Okay, thank you very much.